Hello Sagittarius, how are you all? Thank you for being here. This is Kathy speaking from Divine Debut. This is your timeless bonus reading. And this is because your views have been the, the most, the highest from the other signs. So I've already promised you a free reading, extra, a bonus reading. So here it is. Today is actually the 19th of January 2019 and we're two days away from the full moon lunar eclipse on the cusp of Cancer Leo. Leo it's actually a super moon. It's at zero degrees and 52 minutes of Leo. So it's obviously the last eclipse which is happening on the axis Leo Aquarius. And we're very close to it. Very, very close to it. We're already in those energies. Um, you know, when, when we've got the North Node in Cancer and the South Node uh, now in in Capricorn and the south node is right up there with uh, with Pluto and Saturn and Mercury and the Sun we're actually at the last degree the Sun is at 29 degrees of Capricorn so you know that Capricorn is tough stuff you know they're really hard-working uh, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn so the Sun is in the last degree of the Saturnian ruled sign. So we're seeing what our restrictions are. We're working through our restrictions. We're putting in the hard work. Goodness, I cannot wait until we get into Aquarius energy, even though Aquarius is also ruled by by um, Saturn. But with, you know, the south node in Capricorn, uh, Pluto there, Saturn there. The North Node is actually in Cancer, so we're dealing at these times with anything to do with the family, our foundation, our parents. Uh, cancer is naturally the mother, mostly the mother, who, or whoever takes on the role of the mother. And the South Node being in Capricorn, you know, Capricorn is our uh, highest purpose. It's what we what we strive for, it's our career, it's being the authoritarian. So here is the North Node, there is the South Node. And um, a lot is going on at this time, a lot of Capricorn energy, which says that we've got to go through some sort of death and transformation. We're in eclipse period, we're in between two eclipses right now and from the feedback and my clients and my friends and my family and the whole world I can see I know what it's like to be right now what we're all going through so hold on tight know that when you come to the end of this period um, you know it's gonna be all smooth sailing it look we've got a lot of Capricornian energy in the next couple of years because Pluto is very slow moving, Saturn is very slow moving um, and Jupiter will be joining Capricorn too soon but that's putting in the hard work you can actually see that light at the end of the tunnel you can, you can actually see it now we've got good energies as well we've got Mars and Venus in a beautiful aspect together they're the lovers of the zodiac. So a lot of love situations, things that are going to make us happy. And I don't want to go into a lot of detail because a lot of people want to listen to the tarot. One more thing is that Venus is coming up to Jupiter. Two beautiful energies are going to join together. Okay. This is freedom in love. This is like speaking your truth in love. This is falling in love with someone at a distance someone who's from a foreign place. This is um, expanding on what we love, receiving a lot of what we love 
And uh, as I'm doing your reading, the moon is in Cancer. It's in its home sign of Cancer. As soon as it passes over the no north node, it will be the full moon lunar eclipse for 2019, January 21st, depending on where you are in the world. So let me get this reading up to you. Let's look at the tarot. Dear Sagittarius, please be careful with those rose-colored glasses that you may be wearing. Your ruler, Jupiter, is squaring, which is hard. It's a hard aspect over to, to Neptune, which in ancient Greek mythology is called Poseidon, Posidonas, and he can be really hard. He can be, we've got black or white here, because Neptune is either the divine love, the higher octave of Venus, or it's massive illusions. That's the downfall, that's the shadow side. So having a square with your ruler and Neptune in its home sign of Pisces, Jupiter is in, in Sag, if that's its home. So your ruler is, is at home. Neptune is at, at home in Pisces, okay, and that's going to be going on for most of the year. So please be careful with being disillusioned. Please be careful with um, being too boastful and too certain of where you're heading and thinking that everything is, you know, your path is filled with rose petals. Sometimes there are thorns, okay, in between those rose petals. So make sure that you don't over um, overthink that you're successful you're already there we're still working through tough matters okay let's see your cards i'm doing the four card spread let's go in the middle what's happening in the present and we've got the queen of cups so pisces scorpio cancer let's see what's crowning your reading and we've got the sun. This is beautiful. Leo. So, wow. Okay. And the root of the issue is the Ace of Swords. I love it already. Let's look at the recent past for you, dear Sag. We've got the King of Swords. So you're dealing with an air sign. I would say you are dealing with an air sign. Someone is being cold and aloof. And that could be your energy as well. Let's see what the near future is. And this is a timeless reading, so you can come back to this reading whenever. If you haven't seen it, doesn't matter how long it's passed, what time has passed, you look at the tarot. You look at what the story is with the cards. Let's see. And we've got the hangman. Wow. Piscean energy. Of course, I will not stop at the hanged man. I need clarity. The hanged man is Pisces. It's Neptune. Okay, so let's take one more card. What's this sacrifice? What's this waiting and hanging upside down for? Why are you, why are you surrendering? Let's take a card. And we've got the Five of Cups, all right? Looking at the glass half empty, obviously, this is the card of seeing what has gone wrong, but we've got potential, good potential here. Let me start from the root of the issue. We've got the Ace of Swords. Okay, so that is your foundation is speaking your truth. Some of you may be actually going through separation and divorce. Truth is coming to light. That's what happens when we've got a full moon lunar eclipse. Whatever you're cutting out, know that it's divinely guided. This hand is holding the sword. It's the universe. So whatever is going for, away from your life uh, could be because of truth that's you know coming to light. Nevertheless, this card is called the successful new beginning. Whether you need to go through the trouble of cutting someone away, talking your truth, um, being a little bit, um, you know, you're being on the side of hurting someone else could go the other way as well, uh, always with my readings. Um, air energy is our intellect, it's our perception, um, and it's our communication. 
Now you've got the King of Swords here in the recent past. So King of Swords is someone who's holding another sword. This is someone who could be very truthful sometimes, and I'm not doing reversals. If this king were to be in the reverse, you would say that his words can cut. He can be quite brutal in his words. But he adds up, he does the math. He looks at the logic. He does not use his emotion. So he's got nothing to do with Cancerian energy. This could be an Aquarian, a Libran, or a Gemini um, person. Sun, moon, or rising. And even if it is not, even if they don't have strong air at this time, they're embodying the air qualities, which means that they're talking the truth. Now, usually we say that he's a fair king, he's doing the right thing, but he's been hurt in the past, so he does not go, he does not move forward with his emotions, but with his intellect and his perception and his logic. So when I speak of logic, um, logic brings to mind Mercury, and Mercury rules Gemini and Libra. So um, we could be talking about either one of those signs. Uh, Virgo is not an air sign, but they are very intellectual. Um, and again, as I said, every sign that I mention is sun, moon or rising. Please do not forget to watch your Venus if you're a female and your Mars if you're a male. All right. In the now position, we've got the Queen of Cups, I believe, and I, I perceive that this is your energy for most of you. Now, it can go the either, uh, either way. It could go that you are taking on the energy of the King of Swords because you could be standing in your truth. Yes, and you may be dealing with another Earth sign. Uh, did I say Earth sign? <laughs> I don't have one pentacle here. I don't know why I said earth sign. Now, Cancer Pisces, uh, Scorpio, energy here, a very intuitive queen. One is very emotional, the other one's very intellectual, very cold and aloof. So we've got two polar uh, opposite energies here. I would say not a very good match. So there's probably a some sort of a disconnect here now with the Sun being at the uh, at the crowning section of the reading and usually I see this um, position as very important because um, it's usually what's on your mind but it's your highest ideals your goals and um, I believe that it's the energy that's coming in from the divine. We do receive the uh, information through our crown chakra, so I call this card the crown chakra. And what's here? We've got the sun, Leo. Leo is where the lunar eclipse is happening. So we could have Leo Cancer. Um, the Queen of Cups is a water sign. Um, could be any any water sign. My belief is that it's Cancer. I don't know why, probably because we've got the North Node um, in Cancer and the uh, lunar eclipse is right on the cusp because it's at 0 degrees 52 of Leo which is right on the cusp of Cancer. So the Sun card is clarity, it's warmth, it's children, it's true love, it's healing. Anything that you're dealing with you are going to be healing through it. The sun gives you clarity, it gives you love, it gives you attention, you're up on stage, you're being looked at by, by others, your efforts are being shown to the world. If this is anything to do with career, okay, even though we don't have wands here, we'll be taking a couple more cards, I feel as though your, um, your creative and... Uh, You're sensitive. The sensitive side of you is is coming out. It's it's a very uh, creative energy. I feel really with Leo here, because Leo is what we create. What we create 
it could be your own business, it could be just something creative that you've given birth to, um, is going to be shown to the world. That's your goal. And I believe that through, you know, it's only a matter of time. Look at the halo. It looks like the sun. Now, this is the energy of Pisces. Um, Chiron is at uh, almost 28 and a half degrees of Pisces. It's almost almost finishing up the, this major cycle of being the um, the victim or of any wounds, past life wounds, childhood wounds, or even your childhood conditioning. You're working through those energies and through these experiences you are becoming the healer. You are becoming the one that will be able to heal others. So it could be a time of surrendering to the bigger picture bigger picture because Jupiter is in Sag. Many things are happening with Jupiter there. Venus is just coming up to Jupiter right now. Get ready for new love. Get ready for expansion in love. Um, I also want to say that I feel as though there's going to be um, uh, a lot of pregnancies around about now. We know that eclipses are, um, are shift points these are very, very faded times. Even though it's really tough energy, I believe that what we're going to get back from getting, moving through this wormhole, we're moving, we're being moved into another dimension. Seriously. And through this hardship, we will come out on the end much more harder. Uh, when I say harder, we'll be stronger. That's what I mean. Way more stronger. And I feel as though because we've got Jupiter at home, all these um, energies that are going on right now with uh, the North Node in Cancer, it's all about family. The lunar eclipse is going to be on the cusp of family and children. I believe that at this time, um, and with Venus meeting up with Jupiter, I believe that there's going to be a lot of, you know, it's going to be a baby boom right now f for some time. And that's beautiful. It really is. So new things beginning, full moon lunar eclipse means the ending of some era, some cycle, we're moving to a new cycle people, okay, this is beautiful energy, don't cry over the past, let it go, whatever is dying and transforming, whatever is being communicated recently, just in the past few days, Mercury, the messenger, moved over Saturn, Saturn, which is the karmic um, energy, the karmic lord, um, and the, the, you know, the planet of restrictions. Mercury just moved over that energy. So, you know, Saturn is also the timekeeper. Timekeeper. Things will not happen unless it's time for them to happen. Mercury is the messenger. This is at the base of your reading. The truth is going to come to light. While I'm doing your reading, Mercury the messenger, the instigator of communication, is right on top of Pluto. Pluto is death and transformation. Scorpio, it rules Pluto. Whatever's been hidden is coming up to the surface. Pluto is a malefic. So is Saturn. They're very difficult energies, very difficult days for people. Communication is difficult. Things that are being spoken of are very difficult. Truth is coming to light that people have not known. And through difficult conversations, um, there will be an uprising. And when I say uprising, I don't mean, um, and it could be, and I wanna, you know, as a collect collective energy, this could have somewhere, something to do with the um, global, global t um, uh, scene, but because I'm talking more on a um, not a, on, not on a collective energy right now. I'm talking to each and every one of you individually in your own lives. But as we know, we're all on this 3D plane. We're all affected by the planets, the way they are. The, you know, I see the astrology just like a chessboard. 
where we're playing chess and we have to make the right moves. We're going to win some, we're going to lose some. But the, um, the goal is to win, to get to the end. And it's not an easy journey. Okay, and need, you need you, to use tact, you need diplomacy, you need truth, and you need to have the, to put in the hard work, use your logic, use also your third eye, your right brain, open your chakra, your crown chakra, receive the messages that are coming through, look out for synchronicities and, and move forward. Here it is. Yes very hard energies and yes you could be when I said uprising you could be rebelling against what you did not value what did not work for you Uranus is at 28 degrees and 40 minutes of Aries Aries is the warrior Mars the ruler of Aries is right there Mars is in Aries it's very strong it's all about power it's all about fire it's all about fighting. It's all about being aggressive and starting something new because Aries is all about I am. We are actually now doing what's right for us. So do not concentrate on this. Try and change your perspective. Try and look at things in a different way. Keep that belief open. Jupiter in Sagittarius is all about beliefs. Believe in the good. We're going to have uh, ups and downs but look what's waiting there you are in a time of agreeing you're on the same page with someone it's there change change something about what's not working for you receive the messages listen to the divine and make whatever necessary changes you need I can't tell you exactly what you're going to change you will perceive it you've got the intuition this is your energy. Look into that cup. Okay. Let's take another card on the Queen of Cups. Queen of Wands. So fire sign, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. So we've got two queens here. We've got two women and one man. So we've got... Uh, the Leo energy here I would say more than likely she's looking straight at this Queen of Cups these could be two friends they could be two allies uh, they could be two sisters could be um, a co-worker the Queen of Wands is someone who's very fiery but they're also very lucky they're the lucky Queen this is the lucky Queen and she's looking straight at you so I believe that most of you have got um, someone who's there for you. Whatever you are mulling over, whatever you are crying over, you've got support, I believe, here. Look at the energies here. Now, if this is your energy, if you've got strong fire, this is the reflection in the mirror. Uh, you need to embody, I would say, more than likely the Leo energy right now. Yes, we've got water in our sign. In the horoscope, we've got all the elements. But here we've got um, the very feminine, watery, psychic energy. And here we've got the masculine, uh, um, fiery masculine and do the job go get our energy so if this is if, if both these queens are your energy you need to embody the fiery side right now well it doesn't hurt to have you know the yin and the yang they say we've got to balance yes but because we've got the sun card here i would say trust your intuition and go for it so think about it, go within, look at the information, go with your gut, and then take action. Okay? Now, if this is someone else, if this is a love triangle that you've been in, I would say then that uh, you may be dealing, you know, the outsider, maybe a fire sign. 
someone who's showing much more passionate. And I want to take a card on this King of Swords because they're looking very cold, very collected. So this uh, Ten of Wands, this King of Swords is showing up as cold, but within, deep within, um, we've got wands. So he's probably got an element of fire strong in his chart. He's had some sort of a burden, I would say. Could have been a burden for him. Um, he could have been the burden for you. If you are the Queen of Wands, if you could be a cross watcher, I don't know. Um, because the burden is Wands. Here it's Ten of Wands. It's getting to the end of whatever the burden is. This King could be cutting away whatever has been heavy, whatever has been um, weighing on his shoulders. Uh, but this is a completion as well. Now this could speak of creativity, your vocation, what you have created, what you're working on. And um, so tens always break down to one. So that would be the end of that burden. There is a new creative spark and inspiration here, which the King of Swords is... Um, is dealing with, is feeling, whatever. Wow, okay, I was going to look at the Sun card and we've got two cards. Whatever the case, this is breaking down to the Ace and I'm not going to say that again. I hate repeating myself. Um, but this is the recent past situation. So we've, we're already, you're already at this Ace of Wands, I believe, when I'm, you know, after this eclipse. Maybe up until the eclipse, this is the energy. Let's see what the sun has. Three of cups, there's the eclipse, eight of cups. And look at where the man is walking into. Three of cups, celebration. There's a big celebration coming. Now these could be three siblings, co-workers. Uh, this could be just a situation getting together with family. If we add the eight cups with the ten cups, with the three of cups, sorry, they equal 11. 11 is a fated number. It's a very karmic number. It's a master number. Look at, look at the eclipsed moon here. It looks like there is some sort of a growth spurt. A um, You are maturing. You're moving into clarity. And through, you know, with the sun energy here, Leo, which is the lion, um, with through courage those of you that have had trouble falling pregnant it's happening you need to trust in that you know you need to because if we are looking at what we feel passionate about at this time I think that that's what we need to go with go with the flow go go with what your passion is let's say the energy of the king of swords his, too, his thought process is too much. He's putting too much mental uh, energy, mental power into this situation and it's a burden. So let go of the overthinking and go with what your heart says. The sun is the heart, okay? All right, now, I'm just thinking, I'll just take three Sabilas. I want to look at the hanged man with the Five of Cups. For those of you that are literally traveling, you could be traveling to a sunny place to visit family, friends. You could be even traveling for work. Um, if this is a love triangle, um, there's Two of Cups. The Cups are standing so the cups are all about emotions. The cups suit is the queen of cups. So I believe that the, the happiness here in the near future or whenever you see this reading is going to be, I think that the queen of cups is going to be part of this outcome. Now the five always speaks of changes coming through. I'm going to take one more, one more card. Now this Queen of Cups could be a Piscean. 
sun, moon or rising. Let me take one more. And we've got temperance here, which is the energy of Sagittarius. Here are the angels, spirit guides. This is beautiful. A healing energy, dealing with someone who could be at a distance. As I said, you could be traveling. There will be celebration. Now, dear Sagittarius, this is your energy. Again, travel. You may be dealing with travel, moving to some place, standing in your truth, living in your truth, uh, growing spiritually. That's what Sagittarian time is all about. Now, if this is a love triangle, it's been a very heavy burden for this King of Swords. It's been just too much, but the burden is finishing. Um, you may have been dealing with this person for, I'm going to say, 10 years, 10 months, 10 weeks. I don't think 10 days. Okay, this person has been in the picture for that long. Um, now, this person... As I said, if this is the person that you're interested in, then this person could be dealing also, this is the star of your eye, this person could also be dealing with another fire sign. Now, the queens usually are about the same age, so I do think that it would be more of a rival than a... Um, um, arrival more than a you know friendship here if if this is concerning love right so let me take let me take three cards on the outcome then I want to look at these two queens okay so we've got a malato which is low morale being depressed this could be a little illness as well here we've got alegria merriment and happiness Someone's going out and letting their hair down and having fun with mates. This could also be a celebration. And we've got the Consolante Sopresa. So I'm thinking this is the energy of Uranus. Whatever is happening with Uranus in Aries at the last degrees, Uranus is about to move into Taurus. Roughly, um, is it March or? Yeah, I would say it's roughly around the 15th of March. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I think it is. Uh, let me just check it and I'll tell you exactly when. Um, 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 um. Um, I just um, closed the video so I can check. Yes, it's as I said, roughly around the 16th of March, around there. So mid-March, it's, it's showing here. Something is coming in unexpectedly. He's, uh, unexpectedly, he's got money here. This is something that is precious, something of value to you. So know that whatever you are closing the door on, whatever is at the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel is going to pay off for you. Don't forget that fives bring in change, and change is going to be very... Uh, it's going to behoove you because eclipses are, we're on the wrong path. The universe jolts us onto the new path. That's why the eclipses exist. Okay, and that's the divine playing chess. Let's look at these queens. Queen of Wands, Queen of Cups. So after a period of being depressed and thinking that I can't wait anymore, I've sacrificed too much. I think it's time to get out and about. And you know what? When you think positively and you look after yourself, the blessings just come in. So be a little bit selfish. Go ahead and do that. Let's look at the Queen of Wands. And we've got the King of Cups. All right, things are really getting mixed up now. <laughs> okay, so we've got the King of Cups is right on top of the Queen of Wands. So this is... Cancer Scorpio Pisces. It, you know what's really funny? The funny thing is, is that we've got, let's say, 
the Queen of Wands is either, now she's a leader, right? She's fiery and passionate and very sexual. Very different energies here. We've got someone who's very emotional, who shows, he wears his heart on his sleeve, so he shows his emotions. Yes, the Queen of Wands does show her emotions, but she's more sexually orient orientated. She goes with what is her passion, whereas the King of Cups, the King of Hearts, I call him, is more on an emotional level and his emotions drive him that's his driving force so we've got I see this energy as Cancerian many times Cancer and Leo that's where the eclipse is right on the cusp in between so let's take one card now on the King of on the Queen of Cups now look at this when I've got the King and the Queen of the same suit they usually are twin flame soulmates Queen of Cups and the King of Cups, they're a couple. So the King of Cups is looking straight at the Queen of Cups as well. So I want to say that the King of Swords um, could actually be the same energy, the same person as the King of Cups, but he's holding back on his emotions. The King of Swords could have that, those two sides to him where he's holding back on his emotions and that has been very burdening for him. So could it be right now that he's showing what's deep within his heart, he's actually coming to terms that he has got a heart which hurts, okay, and love is oozing through. Let's look at the Queen of Cups. Nine of Cups. So this is a wish come true. Whatever you see through synchronicities, whatever messages you receive, look at this King of Cups. He's looking straight at that wish. Now, don't forget that the Queen of Cups was right underneath the Nine of Cups. So what does that tell you? That this Queen is a wish come true for this King. That's what I want to say. Now it can go either way, of course. He's her, her wish as well. This is meant to be. This was meant to be, this relationship. So this Queen of Wands, and for, you know, this is a general reading, so a lot of you may be dealing with other people that are family members. This Queen of Wands is, as I said, is someone who's very passionate, and they will speak up straight away. They will go for what they want straight away. Whereas the Queen of Cups is someone who thoughts, who thinks, feels, and then acts, okay? And they're very open with their emotions. And um, they're very psychic as well. So trust in your intuition. As I was saying before, if this is the same person, remember how I said before, he may be dealing with a fire sign. But if that is the door that's closing, that means that this king, or even this king of swords, let's say if it's the same person, has actually found his queen of hearts. So I'd like to know your feedback. I'd like to listen to how this reading speaks to you. It's very interesting for me. I'm going to take three Sibyllas on the sun, eight of cups, three of cups, and then I will call it a day. Um, I'll actually pull one angel answer. Let's take the three Sabilas. So we've got a Mika, which is harmony and balance. This could also be friendship. We've got Delirante, so delirious. Deliriousness can mean uh, something very good or something very bad. It's a neutral energy. Well, it's something very good, you people. It's right on top of the sun. Here is the energy of Jupiter. So pinch yourself. You are awake. This is not a dream. In your crowning position, you're getting your harmony. For those of you that are going through legal issues, because this is Libra and energy, know that you're finding balance. Libra is the partnership house. Okay? Um, you're going to be pinching yourself. You won't believe your eyes. Fortune is coming through. Now we don't have not one, not one card of pentacles. This is amazing. 
So there is a lot of uh, lack of grounding at this time. Try and keep your feet firmly planted on the ground. Beware of Jupiter squaring Neptune. It can be those rose-colored glasses. Okay, that's what the reading says. So I'm going by that. Let me take and look at what's right. Look at what is right on top of my chocolate message cards. Valentine's Day and love. I'm going to read this for you. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so this could be um, a, a small synchronicity for me, and I have to pass it on to you. So look and see what happens to you around Valentine's. Romance and love abounds. A time for love and healing approaches, as does opportunity to make your uh, peace with yourself. If you are single, new love is about to enter your life. If not, your existing existing relationship has potential to transform to higher levels with renewed passion and romance. Before you can truly love another, you must first learn to love, learn to love and accept yourself, flaws and all. And the affirmation is I love and accept myself just the way I am. And I of course look forward to my Valentine's readings. They're coming up soon. Let me take another card, one that I can shuffle and show you what the message is going to be. I love this reading for you. It's It really is wonderful. Know that what hardship you're getting through is, it is divinely orchestrated. It is happening for a reason. I've said that about 10 times today. We need to believe that. Let's take your card. And we've got anniversary chocolate, partnerships, well, you see, and look at the love hearts. <laughs> Here we go. Let me read it for you. This card represents partnerships and, in most cases, a romantic partnership. It represents a healthy marriage of duality of our inherent male and female, yin and yang, energies and I was telling you that earlier it is fear or sorry I can't even read I'm tired is it fear or is it love that is keeping you from where you need to be at this time is it important to remember and I can't read as I said it is important to remember that love will triumph over fear without fail every time and the affirmation is I choose love I celebrate love I am love and there's that Aries energy that I said to you Mars is at home in Aries it's a time of I am I think we're starting after this eclipse we're moving into Valentine's uh, Day energies and I'm loving that I truly am loving that let's take one angel answer by Dorian Virtue and Radley Valentine. Please pause the video, ask your question. A lot of people love these cards. Let's see if I can answer it for you. So we've got love and partnerships. This is amazing. Happy anniversary to those of you that are ecstatic about your anniversary. Maybe there's a um, some sort of a wish fulfillment here. And that could be you may be re renewing your vows for those of you that are have been married before uh, a, a while ago, 10 years ago, whatever that is. Uh, congratulations. For those of you that are single, could even be meeting someone around Valentine's. Ready? Let's take the card. And we've got no need to worry. Thank you, universe. Thank you. Let's read from the book. Look at what I opened up to. Look for a sign. <laughs> no need to worry. Next page, I got straight to it. It's as though Archangel Michael's here and opening the pages for me. Your worries and concerns regarding your question are unnecessary. God and your angels have the situation well in hand and everything is going to turn out perfectly. Obsessing over this subject isn't helping. 
The energy of fear and worry only slows the eventual manifesting of your desires. Visualize loving and happy outcomes and keep your thoughts positive. Very soon you will wonder why you were worrying about this at all. Yahoo! I love that. Jupiter is right here for you, dear Sagittarius. I personally want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You've been so supportive. Now, between you and Libra, it's just been amazing. I think you're both, it's like, you know, a, um, a jewel. Who's going to be the best, um, the highest and the most uh, uh, popular readings, let's say. Libra and Sagittarius have been doing really, really well. So, um... I'm going to announce the next winner, I would say, in the next couple of weeks. So look out for that, who's going to get the bonus timeless uh, reading. And I'd just like to say thank you very much. Stay strong. You know, this reading was done during just a couple of days, not even before the eclipse. Know that the heavens are open. It's a karmic time. Listen to your heart above all. Okay, all right. Thank you, thank you, and sorry about the um, the lack of being able to read today. I'm just buggered, really tired. See you all. Blessings.